On today's episode of Monetize the Mic, we are joined by our amazing client, Melissa Houston. Melissa is a CPA, a financial strategist for CEOs, a columnist at Forbes.com, and the host of the Business Society podcast. Melissa helps successful business owners increase their profit margins without having to increase revenue that's amazing, so that they keep more money in their pocket while increasing their personal wealth. Melissa has over 20 years of experience with large and small corporations, government, not-for-profit industries, while specializing in internal controls, corporate accounting, budgets, financial reporting, corporate and personal tax, audit, and SR and ED. Melissa enjoys helping business owners build their businesses by increasing their financial management skills. Your numbers are telling you a story. Make sure you are listening to it. Melissa's passion is helping business owners go from six figures to seven figures and achieving their personal financial dreams. When Melissa isn't helping entrepreneurs become better CEOs of their business, she can be found at the cottage with her husband, Jamie. Oh my God. That's my husband's name too. Two teen children and three dogs. Welcome to the show, Melissa. Thank you so much for having me. I am so excited to be here. Yay. My we gosh. are excited to have you. We are so excited. Um, so And this is the stuff I love because there's such a gap in the online business world, I think, in people who really understand their numbers. And there's a lot of vanity metrics being posted online of like, this is my business's revenue, or this is the the revenue of the the sales I did for this launch. And but they spent more than that to put the launch on or yeah, Mm -hmm. that's their business's revenue, but they have no profit or they're in the red. And we've experienced this, right? Like not coming from a corporate background or a finance background, there was a year where we had our best ever revenue and we personally made less money than we ever had. And for me, that only had to happen one time for me to be like, (laughs) okay, something is very wrong here. And, and that's what started my kind of interest slash obsession in profit and and understanding those numbers, not just looking at that vanity revenue. So I, I just, I love what you're doing. It's so important and so needed. And I I just think there's such a gap in the online business world and people understanding this, the way that you understand it. So could you tell us, we just read through your absolutely incredible bio. Um, but could you tell us in your own words, how you came to be passionate about doing the work you're doing now, helping entrepreneurs understand how their numbers work, understand how to scale and understand profit? Yeah, absolutely. You know, first of all, I like to say that I am so grateful that you're talking about profit and that you see it and you see it in the industry because that is definitely something that I talk about as well because seven figure seven figure businesses mean nothing if you do not have profit. So when I started my career, when I first um, graduated from high school, I actually became a social worker. So working as a couple of years as a social worker, it really satisfied my need to help people, but I also realized it was a high burnout area. So I'm like, okay, I need to go back to school. I need to find something different if I'm going to make a career for myself, right? I could see this happening quickly. So I'm kind of what I consider the accidental accountant because I really had no intention of ever um, becoming an accountant or even be in business. But at that point in my life, I was looking for something that was going to offer me a solid career, you know, that it was going to keep me employable and pay a decent salary. So working, you know, over the years, what I really enjoyed as a CPA was helping people, helping business owners with their money. And what I, like, I just saw on the regular basis, I was dealing with project managers and business owners and, you know, anybody leading anything. And they had no understanding of what was going on with the numbers and how the numbers could help them make their business more profitable. And I saw that huge gap and I knew like, okay, when I go out on my own, because I knew at some point I definitely would take that leap. This is exactly what I want to offer because there's such a need for it. Business owners, who are doing great at what they're doing, like you've, you've, you know, gotten the experience and education to be, you know, offering your services at, you know, a very high level, you're expert in your field, 
you didn't learn how to manage a business. You know, if, if you're a lawyer, professional services, what have you, chances are you never understood or was taught how to manage a business, especially from the business finance aspect. So knowing what I know with numbers and accounting and, you know, being a CPA and all of that, I know that business owners need to be educated so they can make decisions that are profitable for their business on a day-to-day basis. Not just, you know, that once a year visit to your accountant where you're handing over your books and saying, please complete my corporate tax return or um, what have you. You need to be um, in touch with your numbers on a regular basis so that you understand if you're driving your business into the ground or if you're actually flourishing. Yeah, that's, and that's such a huge distinction because sometimes it seems like the bigger they get, the harder they fall. Like there's people who are saying, oh my gosh, I hit this huge revenue goal. Mm. But if they're not really paying attention to their financials, that can really be making a problem just bigger and bigger and bigger. And they don't realize it until it's too late. And it, throughout my career, I have seen seven figure businesses, multi seven figure business or multi million dollar businesses that have gone bankrupt. And these are real businesses, you know, out in the world, you know, they're established, they've got their reputation, they've got, you know, what, whatever product that they're selling, it's all established, but they failed because of financial mismanagement. And statistically speaking, 82% of businesses fail due to financial mismanagement. So if you understood what was going on in your business, as far as, you know, understanding your financial reports and seeing how you can improve your profit and making sure that your profit margins are comparable to your competitors and such. These are really easy ways to make sure that you stay in the game. But what happens is most business owners feel like this huge amount of overwhelm because, you know, it really does seem overwhelming. Like, well, how am I supposed to know my business finances if I've never, you know, you know, I don't even understand what a debit or credit is or whatever. Right. And it's not about debits and credits and the basic accounting stuff. It's knowing the high level stuff so that you can make those smart business decisions. You don't need to do your bookkeeping. You know, you could have your bookkeeper, you have your accountant that does your tax returns. You know, you may get advice once in a while, but you just, as the CEO of your business, and if you want to crush imposter syndrome, this is a huge thing get to know your business numbers and you will definitely be the boss of your business. I, that is such a good tip. And I feel like we've gone full circle from maybe terrifying people a little bit to, <laughs> to showing the power that's possible from understanding these basics. So what are yeah. some basic ways that business owners can take control and get back in power financially in their business? Absolutely. And it goes right down to the absolute basics. Make sure that your personal and your business finances are kept separately. That is a huge mistake that I often see with clients. So make sure you keep those separate. Uh, Another thing, you know, understand your income statement. Your income statement is super valuable and it's a multi-purpose financial report where you're not only going to learn what your profitability is in your business but you can you know measure so many kpis from this income statement and you can forecast you know the growth of your business income statement really is probably the most used uh, financial report in business but you you know you need to understand the other ones cash flow is huge make sure that you're monitoring your cash flow and that you don't run out of cash or funds to pay your bills. If you are smart about it, you make sure that you have a cash reserve on hand, whether that be an accumulated pile of cash that you've managed to create for yourself, or you've got some, you know, line of credit or some sort of other, you know, investment type product lined up where that will offer you cash during those crunch times, because those crunch times do happen. Another thing is create a financial plan for your business, because I often say this, A goal without a plan is just a wish. So if you're thinking, you know, maybe you're at six figures right now and you're like, oh, you know, I'd like to get to some seven figures, but you're like, you know, it's someday. I I don't really have a plan for it. Well, you're never going to make it. If you make a plan, a financial plan for your business and create actionable steps, you will be able to achieve it. And then, you know, finally, I would say monitor that progress against your plan each and every month. Have a look. What did you... What were your goals for that month? Did you achieve them? Did you not achieve them? And find out why. 
I love, I love it so much. You are speaking my language. Jess, you wanna, do you want to <laughs> dive in with a question? You look like you're, you're ready. I'm just going to yes. like bask in all of this goodness. <laughs> <laughs> any, any podcast about finances, Marky is, is uh, in her happy place. So <laughs> Melissa, you talked about keeping the finances, your personal finances and your business finances separate. So we got that tactically speaking, what a lot of entrepreneurs have a hard time doing is keeping their feelings about money personally yes. separate from the feelings about money in their business. So can you talk a little bit about that? Absolutely. And I'm so glad you brought that up because everybody has a money story. We all carry money stories, even, you know, they can be as early as our, you know, earliest childhood memories. And it's really important to be aware if you're carrying these negative money stories that could possibly be holding you back in business. Like money is the most emotionally charged topic as far as I'm concerned. Like talk about money and people are coming up with a whole bunch of emotions, fear, um, it's a, it's a feeling of security. It's a feeling of wealth and being worthy. Like there's so many feelings and it doesn't end there. There's just so many feelings attached to money. So once you're aware of your money story and you understand how it's affecting you and your business, you can deal with it. Right. Because if you have a fear of let's say sales, sales definitely impact your bottom line. There's prob well, there is a story behind it if you're fearing sales. So you need to get to the root of that problem so you're no longer holding yourself back. There's nothing in business that does not affect your, your bottom line, which is your profit. So whether it's directly or indirectly, how you show up in your business will affect your profit. Yes, I love that. And I think feelings are huge, right? Because you see smart entrepreneurs not look at their numbers and it's not because they're not smart. It's because maybe they're afraid to look at what's there or mm -hmm. they don't feel qualified. So could you touch on that? Because I am really into, I got really into business finance when I realized how direct the correlation was to like my personal income goals and yeah. the growth of the company but I was never like a math person before that. Like I, I, yeah. I wasn't, I was an okay math student, but I wasn't like really good at math and I've just sort of figured it out. And what I found is that you don't need to know advanced math to be able to keep an eye on these numbers. So could you yeah. talk to people who maybe are feeling like, you know, I'm great at what I do, but I am not qualified when it comes to numbers to understand that part of my business. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you bring up a really valid point. I hear this often with my clients, like I'm not good at math. How am I supposed to do this? And it is not difficult math, like you just said, you know, and when you have a vested interest in knowing how much money you're making, all of a sudden it peaks your like, I don't know, mathematical skills or something. You just turn into this mathematical genius, but you don't even have to be like, if you, you've got basic addition and subtraction, you've got Excel spreadsheets that do most of the work for you. You've got accounting software that you can generate all your reports from, and you've got a calculator. So when you know how to calculate these things and they're very basic formulas, like a formula for an income statement is revenue, less your expenses and what's left over. If it's positive, it's your profit. And if it's negative, it's a loss. So once you get the basic understanding of all these reports and, and, and knowing it, it's not the math that you need to be concerned about. You just need to understand what your reports are telling you because, you know, I've always say this, your numbers in your business are telling you a story and your numbers don't lie, right? So it's about reading those reports and it may so sound overwhelming at the beginning, but when you've got somebody teaching you exactly what you need to know, not, you know, what a CPA knows, just what you need to know as a business owner, it just makes it more manageable and less overwhelming. And you're just like, oh, wow, I've got this. Yeah, I can really relate to this because, um, and you know, Margie knows, cause like I've had, you know, we all have our money story. I won't like take a lot of time going into mine, but you know, I've experienced a lot of debt. I've paid a lot of debt off and I really had to do a lot of personal work to make sure to, to stop that from coming into how I work with numbers in the business and the impact that those breakthroughs have had is I'm looking even more at numbers, not just like, you know, revenue profit and stuff like that, but like metrics and data in, cause I lead our sales team. So it's like how many, and you know, Margie keeps asking more questions. So like, that's why it's like really good. If you're the CEO of your business to like be really into these numbers, cause 
as our CEO, Margie's always like, okay, but I want to know this. So it's like, she constantly keeps giving me bigger magnifying glasses. Okay. Go, go yeah. further in, go further in. Go further. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Keep it up, Margie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I mean, I'm sure you see how valuable that feedback is. Right. Mm-hmm. And another thing, getting back to the emotions is you really need to, um, disconnect yourself from what your numbers are telling you, right? Because often business owners will look at them and they'll feel like, you know, their worth is tied to these numbers, but really all these numbers are, is it's feedback telling you what you did well and where you can improve. And we all know business, we're constantly evolving and we're constantly improving. So there's no such thing as perfection. So take that emotion out of the numbers and just look at them for what they are. They're just, it's a gold mine of information. And if you take that information and you capitalize on it by utilizing it, your profit margins will skyrocket. I love that so much. And I also love that you talk about forgiving your past mistakes because it's so (laughs) inevitable that we are all making mistakes all the time, no matter how qualified we are. So could you talk a little bit about forgiving our, our past selves and moving on from, from past financial mistakes? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I carry a huge story for myself where I managed to go into this huge pit of denial and I blew a hundred thousand dollars worth of credit in one year now. And I hid most of it from my husband and I knew something was going on. I, I mean, I'm an accountant. I know, um, everything about personal finance, business finance, and I've been studying it for years. So why did I allow myself to do this? So, you know, I share this story because through this story, I learned, like I, you know, came out of, I I clawed myself out of debt, but I also reflected on how I allowed this for myself, you know, and I learned basically long story short that I really wanted to be in business for myself. So, I share this story so that people see that, you know, we're all human and our mistakes don't define who we are. So if I've made a mistake like that, knowing what I know and, you know, still allowed myself to do it, then, you know, nobody should be feeling guilty about, you know, accumulating debt and what have you, right? We're just human. It's part of our process. We learn, we grow and we move on. Thank you so much for sharing that. Everybody... Melissa is a genius. You heard her bio Forbes column. Like, yeah, I mean, you're, I, I really acknowledge you and appreciate you so much for saying that and really letting people off the hook and showing that if someone as incredibly knowledgeable as you can make mistakes, anybody can, and it, it's yeah. okay to let yourself off the hook. Thank you so yeah, much. Absolutely. I mean, the, the worst thing you can do is just stay in denial and keep letting that whole dig, like, you know, just getting deeper, deeper into debt or whatever, whatever's going on, you know, just at that point where you, you come out of denial and you realize, Hey, I've got a problem here. You need to reach out for help. It's totally okay. We all yeah. do it in some form. Yeah. I love that. Could you talk a little bit more about the idea of a debt mindset an entrepreneur's debt mindset and how that impacts them and what they can do about it? Yeah. I mean, so often, especially for businesses or business owners that are starting out, I often get the question of like, how much is too much debt? And, you know, a lot of, especially on the, on, in the online world, there's a lot of courses that people are investing in. And I air quote that because you don't need everything at once. You know, it's so tempting to spend all that money in the beginning, in the beginning, you have your largest cash outlays. So if you, are in this, you know, idea and and believe me, it's spoken. I hear it all the time. People are like, well, if it's, if it was that important to you, you'd find the money, you know, they, they guilt you and manipulate you into getting your dollars. So you need to take a step back from all of this and say, whoa, wait a minute. Am I focusing on the things I need to focus on? Because the first thing you need to focus on is getting sales in the door. That's very simple because you need to make money. That's the purpose of business. The second thing you need to do manage that money that you've got in your business. So invest in the important things that are going to help you with your sales. That's it. Just sales. And then you can start investing in the other, you know, shiny objects or what have you when you're in a more comfortable financial position. 
I love that so much. One of the first little business, that was like basically the first business lesson I ever learned because my dad's an entrepreneur and he started his business when I was 13 years old. And I remember when he wanted, you know, he started the business in our dining room, take our dining room and turned it into a home office. And he wanted to buy a new office chair. And my mom said, you don't need a new chair. You need a client. <laughs> yep. And it's like, a tough I just, lesson. <laughs> yeah. Cause it's like, but if I had this nice chair and if I have this, it's like, nope, you need sales. Like really look at what are you spending money on? Is it producing a return? Is it going to help you get sales? Yeah. I love it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think that's such an important point and it's really about focus, right? Like, cause all those investments could be good, but it's knowing what to focus on when, and we've absolutely made this mistake like, you know, being past the seven figure mark still made the mistake of over investing because we didn't have the focus, right? Like there were times where we didn't have full clarity on what we needed to do next to grow to the next level. Cause we'd never mm-hmm. grown to that level before. And mm-hmm. so we do have to pull back and ask like, are we throwing money at problems here? And not only does that cost money, obviously to throw money, but the higher cost I think is bandwidth, right? Because yes. we end up over investing in so many different things and it's, it's pulling our attention away and diluting us so that we're not investing our focus in one place. And I think that can be the highest cost when you get to a certain level where you do have more cash to invest, but over-investing is still so dangerous because you lose that profit. And more than that, you lose that focus. So I love that you're talking about focus and prioritizing because that just stays important. I think at every level. Absolutely. Yeah, Yeah. that's such a good point. There have definitely been such important lessons that we've learned, um, over the last year of like having multiple programs that were in multiple coaches. And at times we're not going to like any of the calls for any of the programs because we're so busy because there's so many programs that we're in and it's like, Oh my God. (laughs) So yeah, there were times where like all the contracts ended and we were like, we are just, we're going to just cool it. (laughs) Yeah. And I'm guilty of it too. I've done it, you know, and I'm like, no, 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 I can't do this anymore. I know. I would say my favorite kind of shopping is like personal and professional growth shopping. I just love investing, but yeah, yeah, it's so good. Um, Mark, are there any other questions that you want to ask before we wrap this up? I mean, I think this has been amazing. I guess you have, um, a topic on your one sheet that I really love and we have sort of touched on it, but I would love to just wrap it up, um, on this. Could you talk about the ways that entrepreneurs give away their financial power and why that's a mistake? Yeah. I love this one. Um, definitely what I often see is people who have bookkeepers and their accountants, they're relying on them to tell them how they're doing financially. When your bookkeeper is really engaged to, you know, enter all your transactions and that's pretty much it. They may generate a couple of financial reports for you, but they are not trained to interpret this information. And then your accountant, if you're just bringing your accountant, your books at the end of the year, and they're doing your tax return, it's a very important relationship to have because they're going to give you some tax strategies if they're, if they're good accountants and they're serving you well, but they're not there to offer you the day-to-day um you know, advice and guidance and improvements that you can make. And another thing too, is if you've got financial advisors, if you've got, you know, accountants that are actually in there with you, but you're not understanding the information that they're telling you, and they're, you're not understanding that guidance, that's where you're giving your financial power away. Because often what happens is people are getting you to buy into what serves them and not putting your needs absolutely at the forefront. So for example, if you're going to a financial advisor and they're selling you mutual funds, they're getting commission off that. So they're selling you what they're making money off of. Yes, you're getting a, a, a financial product, but it's probably not what's best for you. So the, the thing, what I really want people to take away from this is having financial literacy in both your personal and your business finances is absolutely essential so that you understand what professionals are guiding you towards. Because being the CEO of your business and your life, at the end of the day, you're the one who's making the final decisions on everything. And if you're trusting people and you're not understanding the decisions that you're making, that's a huge red flag. Melissa, where can our listeners connect with you online? 
Absolutely. So you can reach me at my website at melissahoustoncpa.com and uh, follow me on Instagram at Melissa, oh, excuse me, melissahoustoncpa.com. I also have my podcast called the Business Society Podcast and the blog, thebusinesssociety.co. Awesome. All right. Check out Melissa, Melissa, whether you're on Instagram, want to listen to her podcast or go to her website to learn more about her services. Thanks so much, Melissa. Thank you so much for having me. This has been so much fun. Awesome. We'll see you next time, everyone. Bye. Thanks for listening to today's episode of Monetize the Mic. If you want to get booked on podcasts and learn how to monetize the mic without the hassle or the hustle of doing it yourself, then we invite you to apply for our free Monetize the Mic three-part framework training. This special advanced training is available by application only, and it is the only place where we share our proprietary three-part framework for how to monetize podcast interviews in your business. Go to monetizethemictraining.com to apply for access to this training. Again, go to monetizethemictraining.com.